Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for this new year that you have brought us and entered us into. Our hearts and minds are open to receive our directions and instructions from you, Father. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for the directions that you've given to us, that your body might continue to increase, that the kingdom of God will continue to expand and be all that you have called us to be and to do all that you've called us to do. God, we just bless you today and we thank you so much for the opportunity of, of just being a part of your family and to do what you have called and directed us to do. We bless you, Father, and we praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. And all of the people of God said, Amen and Amen. Well, good morning to everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to come and to share the Word of God with you. I would just like to say to our viewing audience out there that are watching on YouTube and on this television, we thank you so much. And we want to just wish you a wonderful, happy new year. Uh, we certainly thank God for you and appreciate you so much. Our hearts uh, go out to you and our prayers as well. In fact, I just want to just pray for our viewing audience for God's grace and mercy and increase to continually be upon them. Let's just agree. Father, I pray for our viewing audience, for our members, oh Father, those that are not able to make it out, dear God, I pray for them. And I thank you for keeping them ever in your care. God, your love is always extended to us, dear Father. And we just bless you and we praise you and we thank you that you are able to keep us together, that the, 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 the glue of God, the power and love of God that bonds us together and calls us to be one. Oh God, I thank you for that. And I thank you for the increase of your people. I thank you for the blessings that's on your people, those that are home, those that are not able to come and be a part of the, of the in-house assembly. God, I, we pray for them and we thank you for them that they will continue to increase as you minister your grace unto us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you so much. Thank you for your efforts, all of your support that you are, the continual support that you are given to the ministry. And, and we certainly appreciate you so much. Thank God for you. And so we're just going to continue to do what God called us to do. Thank God for all of you, you that are, that are present. Hallelujah. What a new year. Everybody's excited. This is a new year. And uh, I was, as I was meditating and, 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 and thanking God for all of his greatness and all that he has done for us, uh, you know, last year we celebrated 30 years of ministry, and I, I'm just, I was just elated throughout the year. One of God did wonderful things, and there was such a blessing to so many people uh, as a result of all that God had done through us through last year. And so as we launch into this year, I was meditating, you know, dear Lord, what is it that you would have us to do? Where are we going from here? And I believe I heard very clearly in my heart, God was speaking to me saying, what, you need, we need to just get back to some basics as we build, making sure that our foundation is properly shored up and making sure that our, with the things that we are building on is solid. And my word is it, so it, it would be good to just get back to some basics and just uh, get in there and talk about the things that calls for good, strong growth mm -hmm. and development. And I, I, I got a scripture from over in Revelation. Now, over in Revelation, Jesus addresses the church himself. If you read the seven letters to the churches in Asia, you'll notice that Jesus, it's all in red writing. And those messages are directly from Jesus himself given unto John, who had been uh, 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 exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And Jesus gave him this revelation uh, of, that, that of the things that was shortly to come to pass. And also he, some things that he had observed, obviously, within the churches, and he addressed these things. 
And there was a, a clause there that he said to one of the churches there that I, I've just plucked it out uh, to kind of be a guide for what we are going through, what we are doing. Uh, it's very easy to get off course, uh, and this is in anything. Uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, in my military career, uh, there were times we would do up training. You just, you, we call it up training. You go back and you do some, you go back to the thing that you had already been taught and trained in, and you go back and you do some, you do up training and then uh, advance the training yeah. as well. But, uh, and so I, I kind of call that, call this that. Uh, we, we need some, you know, we need to go back to some basic, get back, making sure if you always have a good solid foundation to build on, uh -huh. you, you, know, you can always have a solid structure. Amen. But, but, but sometimes, you know, you need, your foundation needs to be shored up and you need to go back into to, to, to some of the basic things that God has been teaching us, you know, along the lines of, of, of faith and love and, 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 and the things that we need to know in order to continue to excel and fulfill the purpose that God, God has given unto us. And so the, the, the verse that I pull out is out of our Revelation chapter 2 and the fifth verse. And it says, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do. To re the word repent simply means to turn around, yeah. mm -hmm. to reverse your directions. Turn around. If, you, if you're drifting away, then get back on course. Do the first works. Notice what he calls it. He called it the first work. Foundational works. Mm -hmm. Do the first work. I will come to you quickly and remove or else. And he does this or else thing. In other words, when Jesus gives instruction, he, he intends for us to follow them. Amen. You know, he doesn't give instruction just, just to be throwing words out there. He said, you know, now you'll do this because after all, Jesus is the head of the church. Right. And, and, it's, you know, following Jesus is not a, not, a, is not, a, not a question of discussion. Obeying him is really not for discussion. He is the Lord. He is the head of the church. He is Lord of all. And so when Jesus give us instruction, it, it's not nothing to, nothing to talk about. It's nothing to ponder. It, it's just to do it. It's simple as that. At least that's the way I see it. And that's the way it is. That's where it should be. I don't see where Jesus gives us an option. Well, they have to do what you want to do. No. Ha. I don't see that. No, do what you want to do. It is he gives instruction. And so, but, but you, know, you got to know this. I have enough confidence in him yeah. to know that he won't give me bad, uh, bad instructions. Amen. My trust is in him. Whatever Jesus says to do, I mean, do it. Remember when, remember when Jesus went to that wedding and uh, the, you know, they, they asked him about that, about that you know, he, he turned that wine into, water into wine. Remember that deal? Yeah. And uh, his mother said something there at that wedding. Mm -hmm. She said, you do what he said do. If he said do it, you do it. Yeah. If he said you get some pots, you get the pots. That's a good, that's a, you know, we need to hear that. If Jesus says something, I don't need to talk, it ain't up for discussion. Just do it. Because his word is right. And in his word, Jesus, he is the word. He is the word. And so we, 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 we need to understand that. So as we, as we reflect on our beginnings and, and, and begin work on the basics of Christianity, uh, then we, we, need to, we need to make sure that the first thing we need to do is believe him. Because if you don't believe what Jesus says, if you treat the thing that he says as, as, a, as an option, mm. then it's no good. You, you know, you, you're on the same path that you're already on, path of failing. And so uh, it's not a matter. So he says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. You know what I mean? In other words, yeah, you, you was going fine, and, 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 and we, 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 we rejoice, if you notice, because I'm very real about this. We, we rejoiced last year, you know, we rejoiced over the wonderful blessings and over the things that God has done within this ministry yes. in, the, in, our, in the first 30 years of our op operation. And we, we celebrated that last year, you know. So there was a good work in the beginning. Mm -hmm. There was a good work, and, 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 
But, but he says, let's get back to that. Let's get back to the good works, the faithfulness. I, I remember I observed uh, it was a great faithfulness, and there was a lot of enthusiasm in this ministry. There was, an exci there was excitement. But then over a period of time, you know, we just kind of fizzle out. You know, you kind of, you know, taking the things of God for granted. Yeah, yeah, are you still with me? Well, you need to stay on the, you need to keep, a, keep stay on the cutting edge, so to speak. Yes, not, not just becoming drowsy, if you will, over the things of God. Mm -hmm. But you got to be excited yes, about the things of God. And so he said, remember where you have fallen. Remember, remember when, when there was an excitement. Yes. And, and I have to do the same thing. Yes. I, 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 I'm talking to us. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to you. I mean, I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to me too. Yes, don't, 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 there, there, there's, there's an excitement. There was an excitement. You know, I found out about healing. Dear God, I can be healed. Yeah, I didn't know about healing. I found out about my mouth. I remember that one of the first messages that I heard about the tongue was that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life, I was glad to find it out. Woo, it excited me. And all of a sudden, I began to watch what I say. I didn't just say anything. And it produced great benefits in my life. I, 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 was, I, was able to, I was able to turn the tide of my life. I was walking in death, and, and I didn't know it. And, 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 and my relationship, see, your relationship with God is not about how good, good or bad you are. And that's, that's not the way it is. We think that God measures us that way, but that's not true. It's not about you being good or bad or, or whether you, you know, you're pleasing God, if God is happy with you or not happy with you. It's the matter of you walking by faith or not. Amen. It's a matter of you walking in love or not. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of you choosing to forgive people or not. It's a matter of you, uh, the words that you speak out of your mouth. It's a matter of what you say. Mm -hmm. Because you can have an idea about something and then your mouth is all crosswise. Well, you know you're going the way of your mouth. Amen. Your life is the sum total of your words. Oh, I was glad to find that out. Mm -hmm. I was excited about it when I found it out. That my life was the sum total of my words. But do you know after a while you can drift out of that? And you can find, find yourself saying crazy stuff like you always did. Saying stupid things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, your mouth going, going, going back wild again. Well, no, no, let's, let's stay on the cutting edge. Stay on the cutting edge. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, we, we would, you know, I remember back in the, you know, in the early days of our ministry, you know what I mean? I mean, dear God, you, you wouldn't even put up with a headache. Amen. I found out, dear, get your hands off of my body, devil. Yeah. You must be crazy. Yeah, we, 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 we were on it. Yes, sir. And then after a while, you get to laying back and, hey, hey, well, that's, that's a little, don't worry about that. You start taking stuff from the devil that you used to wouldn't take. Right. No, 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 don't, 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 don't fall back. Remember, he said, remember, Jesus, this is Jesus. Yes, sir. He's remember, therefore, from where you've fallen. Mm -hmm. Remember? Remember when you was excited about the Word of God? Yes. Remember how you couldn't wait to get out to the Word, get out to the house of God? No. Remember? Yes. I remember back in the early days. I remember there was, there was no such thing as, 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 as there's no such thing as a too long a service. Amen. Come on. Shucks. I'll be in there with my member of the center been served just with my mouth wide open, mouth and ears, everything open, just listening. Yeah. And there was no such thing as going as too far. Yes, yes. There was no such thing as that for me. I remember the excitement of those days. 
I used to get on an airplane and fly across the country, across the halfway across the country, to hear the word of God. I was excited. I used to go to meetings. I used to go into go into go to go to go to meetings, crusades. Dear God, crowds. I used to stand in lines. Stand in line. Did you hear what I say? You, I was standing in line to try to get a front seat. I was in meetings. I remember going to meetings. I was in meetings down in Philadelphia. Yeah, in line, stand in line. Mm -hmm. and, and no, no, no. Well, no, late coming, late. There was no such thing as that. Amen. People are standing in line before the doors open. Yeah. Standing in line outside the church door before the doors open. Yeah. And when the doors open, you run to try to get a front seat. Yeah. Anybody remember that? Yeah. My wife was there. She was with me. Run to get a front seat. And now look. I hope the camera can see the can, I hope you can see these seat, empty seats. What happened? Jesus said, I said, Jesus said, Revelation 2 5. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. You see that? Remember therefrom from where you have fallen. Repent mean, hey, wake up and come out of that rut and get excited about God again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is this is this is it. Get ex Jesus says this. Get excited. He says, get excited about me. Get excited that you got that you are healed. Get excited about my grace. Get excited about my love. Amen. Get excited about how I take care of you. Get excited about my prospering you. Get excited about the sharing of the gospel. Get some tracks in that pocket. Go, go, we used to go get past our tracks. Put tracks in your pocket. I talked about this a few, a few months ago. I don't know how many, I mean, how many got some tracks in your pocket. I'm talking to us. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to us. Me. I'm talking to me. Get some tracks in your pocket. I put some in my briefcase. I got them in my briefcase. I got to pass them out. See what I mean? Get started. Do something. Do something. Get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Jesus. Now, 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 people, you can blow me off if you want to. And I know sometimes people just, ah, ah. you can blow me off if you want to. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating Jesus. You go and read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Remember, yeah. Revelations 2, 5, is Jesus talking. Yeah. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen mm -hmm. and turn from it. Repent, turn from it. Mm -hmm. Do the first works. Yeah. Go back and go back and get excited. Mm -hmm. Go back and get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Mm -hmm. Get excited. Get back in that word. Get back in my 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 word. Not just hearing it, but doing it. James says, don't just be a hearer of the word of God, but be a doer of the word. Get excited. Get excited mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Because that's, 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 that's you, you, there's a dullness. And I see it, I see it, I see it everywhere. I see it. I see it in this church. Uh -huh. See it in other places. Yeah. There's a dullness and a passivity. There's a passiveness. There's a just a, 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 a just a whatever. It just doesn't matter. And we are comfortable. We're interested in pleasure. You want to you want to get you want to get people excited. Start talking about pleasure. Talk about pleasure. Talk about vacation. Talk about, ah, yeah, ah, yeah. But talk about the things of God. You understand what we're saying here? Yes, sir. This, this is where we are. This, this, this is where we are. This is, this is 2021. And God said, hey, wake up, church. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Remember from where you have fallen. Repent 
do the first work. Now, he said, now you either, you, either follow, you either receive my counsel or else. Now, I'm a little jumpy about that what else thing. I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel about it. But that or else thing, yeah, he said, or else, you know, you, 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 you don't do what I tell you, then there's, there's going to be a consequence. Now, think about it. Or else. Or else. Or else, I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand. Now, 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 John, over there in Revelation, he, he told us what the lampstand was. Yeah. That's your church. Amen. Yeah. Remember the stars, the seven stars and the seven lampstands? The seven stars are what, the angels of the seven churches? And the lampstands are the seven churches. Seeing churches close up? Yeah. See what I'm talking about? This, this, this is not, this is real. Well, you, I see, you see them dwindling, I see them dwindling, that's dwindling now. And, and I've seen it more now than I have ever. Churches shut down. It's not, it's not, God already said it. Yes, he did. Shut down. Of course, we got a good excuse, we got a reason for it. Well, that's, that's typical, that's typical. But the fact remains what? He said it. He said, or else I will come to you quickly. And what? Lord God Almighty, help us, Jesus. And do you know what? We will read right on top of that and, and make an excuse for it and go right on and continue to, and continue to just walk in, in, our, in our way we are without changing. We act like we are, we're just, we are, we'll write that off. We'll just turn away from it. You better look at it. Oh, yeah. Better look at it. He said that. He said, or else. I, w I would rather to follow Jesus in counsel. I would rather follow his instruction. And I've said, you, you've heard me say this before. I'm going to stay. I'm, my, my mind's made up. My mind is made up. My mind is made up. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to run until ain't nobody, if, ain't, if ain't nobody's in the gang but me running. And then I, I said, well, it's me. I'm running, I'm running, I ain't quitting. Amen. Now I remember Jesus, the, the crowd got scarce on him. The crowd got, his crowd got scarce on him. And they left. He got into a handful. You remember the multitudes that was following Jesus? And man, he got, he got, the, he got, the, preaching, he got the preaching the kingdom so strong that dear God, they come to a point, they said, oh! He must be out of his mind. Mm. And the other rest of the other bunch said he got a demon. Yeah. The Pharisees and the leaders and the scribes. And, they said he got a demon. He got a devil. Mm. Belzebub. Yeah. That's what he was called. Uh -huh. Paul comes along in his day. He is preaching and preaching and they got mad at him and threw rocks at him. They got mad at him and threw rocks at him. And they made, he just said, I'm just, he just flung his hands up and said, I'm going to the Gentiles. Uh -huh. Remember that? It's all in the book. It's all in the book. It's all in. And I don't know what's amazing how we read this and just, we just don't pay no attention. Are you still here? You see where we are? You see? See, I, we, there, 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 to, there need to be in it. We have to stir or start a fire. In the hearts of the people of God, and that—that's that's what I'm planning. I'm going to try my best to do this in 2021. If I can't get a fire inside of you, dear God, I'm going to, you gonna either catch fire, or you're going to leave me, one or the other. Because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm pouring the gas on. I'm going to pour the gas on. If you get too hot, then you can't take it. But then just, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and, and, and this is not the first time that Jesus had to deal with stuff like this. He, he dealt with it himself. Yes. And he was, I mean, they, 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 they got so upset with him, they just all left. And then that last little handful that was left, he said, you want to go too? Isn't that something? See, that, that's real. This is the kingdom. 
Yeah. This is the church you're talking about. And they just left because they couldn't take it. And he looked at the disciples and said, can you want to go too? I can imagine how that made him feel. Dear God, he done come down here to lay his life down. Yeah. And he acting like it ain't nothing to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just walk off. God, that must have made him feel awful. Oh. Oh. Well, here we are. This is the identical same church today. It's the same kingdom. And we have the same devil buzzing the minds and heads of people. The same devil. Do you think it's going to be your generation going to be any different? Your generation is not going to be any different from those of old. But God is consistent with his counsel. He is consistent. God's been dealing with his people consist down through the ages. He's been dealing with his people from the time he brought them out of Egypt. Right. Dear God, down through the ages. You read all through the Old Testament, down through the years, dealing with his people, dealing with his people. Oh, yeah. And then down, then, 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 then Jesus come and birthed the kingdom in the earth. Mm -hmm. And then he's dealing with it, dealing with it. All of the apostles, the apostles, mm -hmm. dealing with it. The very writer of Revelation is on punishment when he writes this. John is on punishment out on the Isle of Patmos that received the revelation from Jesus when Jesus gave him this, this word here that yeah. I'm reading to you right now. That's the, the church. Was, it was, that's, that's, the, he was, he, that's the church. You see, you see what I'm, you see what we're saying? And yet, so why do you think that you're just going to have a wonderful, sunny, warm church, no pressure, no problems, no adversity whatsoever. Ain't no such thing as that. No. Not while the devil is running loose. No. You understand? Do you understand this? And we rip and we run around just like, yo, oh, you, oh, God, you ain't going to find no better spot. Amen. Looking for a soft spot somewhere. Nah. Well, I'll leave that church. I'll go get, get go with this one. Mm. <laughs> looking for a soft spot. Running around looking for a soft spot. Come on, dear God, wake up. Let us awake. 2021, we're going to wake up. We're waking up. Wake it, wake up. Wake up, church. There is no soft spot. We're looking for a soft spot on the earth where devils are running loose, and you're looking for a nice little soft quiet spot where everybody would just stroke you on the head and say, poor thing. Yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody in one little happy little group and nope, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Ain't no such place as that. Amen. Now, that, now we, that, 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 that utopia is coming after the devil goes to jail. But he ain't in jail. <laughs> I don't know what you think. He's not in jail yet, you know. I said, he is not in jail yet. He is running loose in the earth. And if you're running around trying to find a nice little soft spot somewhere where you can have a nice little, where we have a nice little church and everything be real nice, everybody real nice, my heart goes out to you because you are deceived. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, think it not strange when you fall into various trials and oppositions. Don't you think it's strange? Jesus says, let's go back to the first. Because, see, it's not, here is, here is, the, your, here is your and my success. Your and my success is when we get in this book and dig into the word of God because we have been given authority over darkness. But you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You and I are going to have to lay hold on this eternal life. It's there. It's yours. It's available unto you. But you got to fight for it. you got to fight for it. I have to fight for my healing. 
I have to fight for my peace. I have to fight for everything. I have to fight. I have to fight for this church. I have to fight. So they don't say there's no, there's no easy spot. There is no easy spot. There's no gravy. There's no gravy. I know we, we think, no, I'm going to get uh, uh, Show it to me. Yeah. When you find a gravy church, show me it. Show it to me. Mm. There's no gravy church no. where everything is everything so, so nice and, and everything just, ain't no problems and there ain't no devils, nobody. No. And every, everything is nice and, and no oppositions. And then, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> no. Now, 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 you can have that. You can have that, yeah. but you're going to fight for it. Yeah. You're going to fight for this. Yeah. If you, you can have it. And it's, it's, it's Jesus purchased that for us. Mm-hmm. And you can have it, but I'm telling you, you're going to take it. Violence. Ta- yeah. when the, since the days of John the Baptist, every, the, the church suffers violence. Mm-hmm. Violence. Take it by force. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. You got to take this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter number six. Mm-hmm. See, this is this is this is the word of God. Fight the good fight of faith. Mm-hmm. Six twelve. First Timothy six twelve. Yeah. Do what? Fight the good fight. Do you understand fight? fight. If you if you if you you should. Mm-hmm. I've been knowing about fighting since I was in grade school. Amen. That's why I started fighting that. Yeah. Not proud of it, but I was. Mm. But that was the wrong kind of fighting. <laughs> this, is, this, this is not the fight you talk about. And I think sometimes we get it mixed up. <laughs> we, we are, we're not fighting flesh and blood. Yeah. We're not fighting people. You're not fighting people. That's another one we need to get on to, get a hold of. You're fighting a good fight of faith. You're fighting to walk in this faith, this faith and grace that God's given to us. It's, it's, the one, it's a wonderful place. But you got to fight for it. Mm-hmm. Devils will try to keep you with a natural mind and keep you over in the natural arena. Yeah. you got to fight to step out of the natural arena and believe God's word and walk by faith. Yeah. Fight what? The good fight of faith. Mm. Lay hold on eternal life. Now listen to me real carefully. Listen to me. If you're sitting around just waiting for things to get better, I got news for you. You're waiting for a bus that's already gone. Now that, I, I didn't say that to, to put a damper on anybody. I said it to awaken us up. If you're sitting around waiting for things to just get better so I can be a good Christian, or just waiting for things to get better, you, my friend, you are waiting for a bus that's gone. And your wait at the bus stop is in vain. No, 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 no. You got the word of God. That's why I'm, I'm sent to go, I'm sent by God to yeah. tell his people about his word. Mm-hmm. I, I know what I'm here on this earth to do. I know what I'm here for. Oh, yeah. I'm here to love people, and I'm here to tell them what God said. Yeah. Jesus said, remember, therefore, from where you come from. Mm-hmm. He said, remember from where you've fallen. Remember. And, and, we, and th- th- we, particularly those that's been around this church for a while, you know, you know our beginnings. Uh-huh. 
and you know the excitement and the enthusiasm. You know it. And you know where we come from. But there's been a drowsiness. There's been a breeze of a drowsiness, a wind of drowsiness that's a blown across this oh, yeah. church. Oh, yeah. Complacency, lack of understanding, and a drifting back into the flesh. Mm-hmm. We've taken the blessings of God that he's blessed us with and we're using them for the f- benefit of the flesh. Yeah. And we're exalting the flesh and got the flesh on a high pedestal. Uh uh-uh. uh. Down with the flesh. Mm-hmm. Down with the flesh. Down with the flesh. You're going to have to, I'm telling you, if, if you waiting, just waiting, I just want to be uh, for, for flesh stuff, just waiting for flesh stuff. Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Turn over to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 21. This is the message of Jesus Christ to the church. He's awakened us up. He's given us, he's given us, a, he's given us a chance to wake up. Jesus loves us. Listen to me real carefully. I'm, I'm coming to you straight from the throne of God. Jesus loves us. But he doesn't, he doesn't care much for the flesh, but this flesh that we're, 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 that we're soaking in, just, just the way we're just allowing ourselves to fall back into the flesh, trying to develop a good... What, dear God, have mercy on us. We, we, we're trying to take the blessings of God and develop a good life for the flesh. Mm. No good. No. no good. No good. That's that, and I'm being straight with you. We, we won't accept it. We won't believe it. We'll say, ah, yeah, 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 he's just self-talking. I know what's going on. Uh, come on. Mm-hmm. No. No, no, no. Ain't no flesh going to glory in God's presence. Ain't no flesh going to glory in God's presence. If you all you are fighting for and working for is to, is to please your flesh and to put your flesh in a good spot, Forget it. You have failed and don't even know it. No, 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 no. Listen to this. Acts chapter 21. This is the word of God. I will preach to you God's word. Your choice to do with it whatever you want to do. Verse number 7 of chapter 21 of Acts. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to... Talimus greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as we stayed there, as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Yeah. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own feet and hand, hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now when we, had, when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Oh, Paul, they're going to do this to you. Don't, don't you go there. Don't you go there. Protect yourself. Stay down here. Don't go there. They're going to kill you, Paul. They're going to hurt you. I just, I'm, I'm t- they're going to bind you. They're gonna, I look at it. They, the prophet just told you what they're going to do to you. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Paul, then Paul answered, 
What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you see the church that you and I are in? Did you see the real, that's the, you see the real one? Amen. This is the Apostle Paul. He's called to, he's the one that sent you, brought the, brought the word of God to us, you know. Yeah. He was sent to bring the word of God to us. Mm. This is his attitude. Do you see what, do you, do you, do you see? Yeah. Do, do you see, the, do you see the difference in his attitude and the culture that we present, the present day culture that we're in? Do you see the difference? He, he, he's not, he said, no, 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 I don't care. Jesus taught us, he said, if a man wants to save your life, you better lose it. You got to lose it. Mm-hmm. You, you got to forget about you. If, you're gonna, if you want to save your life, you, the first thing you got to do is lose it. Yeah. Yeah. You got you to give, give it up. You got to say, I don't care. I don't care. When David took off after Goliath, he wasn't worried about David. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood toe-to-toe and said, we will not bow, they weren't concerned about themselves. Do you understand this? When Peter is threatened for preaching the gospel, and they took him and arrested him and put him in jail. He was not concerned about himself. So why do you think that we can drift away from the things of God and become more concerned about ourselves than we do the gospel of Jesus Christ and be successful? Why do we think that? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I am a voice. Mm -hmm. And I will speak this as long as I'm breathing. I will speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. I will speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I don't have to write a sermon. I, I'm, I'm, just re- I'm just reading scriptures to you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not reading notes. I'm reading, Jesus, I'm reading, I'm reading Jesus' words. Remember therefore from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first work or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. I'm not, that's not notes. These, this is God's word. Don't, don't get upset with me. I had to come to a place where I'm not concerned about me. I'm not, 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 I'm not trying to preserve, preserve me. I'm not trying to protect me. I'm, forget about me. This voice is going to cry the word of God as long as I'm here. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to echo God's word. I'm not going to try to pacify nobody. I'm not going to try to make you feel good. I'm not even going to try to make me feel good. Because it ain't about me feeling good. It's about me echoing God's words by the spirit of the living God. And that's what I intend to do. That's what I intend to do. I intend to do that. Chapter number uh, 20. Pick up at verse number 17. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. When they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly in, and from house to house. Well, that's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm proclaiming to you God's word. Yeah. 
I'm proclaiming to you, I'm echoing God's words to you. Verse 21. Testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying, the chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. This is the attitude. This is the Apostle Paul. This is the church. This is God's mouthpiece in the earth. In his generation. Well, I'm, I happen to be a mouthpiece for God in the earth in my generation, yeah. in 2021. Mm-hmm. That's why I, 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 I speak the same words. Mm-hmm. I don't have to change them. They're God's words. I don't have to try to alter them. Amen. Because it's the same message. Oh, yeah. I've developed the same attitude that he had. Oh, yeah. People today need the word of God just like people then needed it. Devils hate God today just like they did then. They're doing everything they can to anesthetize and to stroke the people, to get the people's attention away from the things of God as they did then. It's the same. What are we going to do in our generation? Are we going to turn coward and cave in and flow with the world? Or are we going to stand and proclaim the unadulterated word of God? That's the choice. In 2021, are we going to stand for God and declare his word without compromise and crucify your own flesh and get it out of your way? Well, what are you going to do? That, that, that's, you got to decide. Every one of us have got to decide that. Every one of us, if you're viewing that, every one of us, have to, you have to make the same choice. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Are we going to go the ways of the world? Are we going to be allow the devil to fan us and take us away from the things of God? Or are we going to stand for God and live for him and love people and take this gospel message to a dying world? Which are we going to do? Are we more concerned about ourselves than we are about our calling? Are we? You tell me. Am I? More valuable than my calling? Are you kidding me? Am I worried, concerned about me rather than what God has called me to do? If you're faithful to God, he'll be faithful to you. If you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. That's what he said. If I take care of his business, I'm worried, he will take care of my business. He is able and will do, has made promises. He will not fail you. He will not let you down. He's already let you. He said, you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You don't have to try to waste your time trying to take care of you. He has already established a way and means to take care of you. But if you don't believe that, you got to take care of yourself and and use some sense and all of this and all of that. Yeah, well, go right ahead. Do whatever you got to do. But my heart's desire. We move into this 2021 era. I want to do God's business. That's all I'm interested in doing. I believe his word. I I read his word. His word has already declared his, 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 his blessings on me. He's already told me, son, I will take care of you. I will, I'll, I'll take care of you. You take this gospel to the world. I will take care of you. I believe that. I will t- say, God, he, he will take care of you. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. 
He will take care. See, come on, people. See, either we believe this or we don't. Uh, what, what, you know, you, you, uh, you know either, 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 we do, uh, either we do or we don't. Yeah. See, see God, God is faithful. Mm-hmm. He is faithful. He is not going to, God is not going to allow you to lose out on anything. You mean to tell me you about God's business and he is going to allow you to lose? Mm-hmm. You can't lose. You understand this? You can't lose. You can't lose. Now, 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 now look at the look at look at Paul's attitude. He says, "I don't count my life dear to me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not worried about my life." Where's his focus at? His focus is on kingdom business. Now he gives God an opportunity to fulfill his word in his life. You see that? He, he said, I'm not, you breaking my heart. I'm not just ready to be bound. I'm willing to die. Well, he just put himself in a position for God to take care of him. He did take care of him. Once they threw rocks at him until they thought he was dead. He got up and went on back to the next town and went to preaching. Come on. He didn't stop preaching the gospel just because they started to throw rocks at him. Neither did he stop preaching after they threw rocks at him. You have the same devil today. Using different tactics. The devil will use the tactics of the time. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, they, 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 they're not allowed to throw rocks at you today. Hey. But they'll do, they'll, 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 he'll do other things. Oh. Just the same as throwing rocks at you. Yeah. Don't you understand that? Yeah. You say, oh, we, 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 the devil. No, he ain't saved. Mm-hmm. I said, no, he is not saved. Mm-hmm. He, threw, he threw rocks at Paul and killed him. Well, 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 well they can't throw rocks at you. In 2021, he can't throw rocks at you. But he can do other, he can do other things that is equal to throwing rocks at you. He can frighten you into a panic. There's no, there's no natural laws against that. Yeah, see what I mean? He can shut you down. Same thing, same thing. See, to the devil, the devil wasn't so much interested in just killing Paul, uh-huh. he wanted to shut his mouth. Yeah. That's what he. That's what. He, that, that's what the devil wanted to do. He didn't. He was. He didn't know so much want to see him dead. Uh-huh. That wasn't his goal. His goal was to shut him up. Uh-huh. And that's what he couldn't. So he figured if he killed him, he had to shut him up. Uh-huh. Well, he killed him, and it still didn't work. That didn't work. He got him went on back to town. Peter, same thing. He, he wasn't so much interested in putting Peter in jail and just killing him. He, the devil wanted to shut him up. Yeah. See, you've got to look past the, the, the things that's actually going on and see the spirit behind them. Yeah. See, that's what we're missing in that. Mm-hmm. See, we're so focused on what we see going on, yeah. we don't see the spirit behind it. Mm-hmm. The spirit behind it is to shut you down. Shut your mouth. Get you out of this Jesus mode. That's the motive. He said, the devil can kill us about where you go, what you do. As long as you don't say nothing about this Jesus. As long as you're not witnessing and loving people and forgiving people and telling them about the goodness and the grace of God. See me? Are you still Are you still here? He's trying to shut you down. See, he don't, he don't care about what you do. See, but it wouldn't work on any of them. It wouldn't work. But you see, what I want us to do, it's a basic thing of what I want us to do. God is saying, tell my people that I've got their back. Yeah. 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 My people are acting as if though I don't even exist. 
Get back to basics. Do the first work. Tell them to awake unto me. My word is the same as it always been. You remember when you first read the 91st Psalm? You remember when you first read, first heard it? Wow. I didn't know about all of that. Wow, I got really excited about it. And then we just kind of, huh? Oh, oh, huh? What? What? No, people. Back to your first love. Listen to God's word. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High uh -huh. will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Well, his faithful promises. God who cannot lie. I mean, Titus said God who, he can't lie. So how, how, when you read, I mean, don't you feel, don't you just get all goosey when you read this? This is channeled to you. This is God's love letter to you. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do you believe that? Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. He said, don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. What is he saying? He says, don't worry about them. Don't let the, don't let the devil drive fear in you with this. I'm telling you what I, I'm telling you about me. Now, who are you going to have the most confidence in? Are you going to have confidence in me, or are you going to have confidence in what the devil is telling you? Did you ever notice God did say, well, you know, don't dread the disease unless it's a real bad one. No, 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 come on. But you see, don't you see how God is? Because every opposition that you encounter are things of the devil. Yeah, yeah. Every opposition is from the devil. And God has never placed us at the mercy of a devil. No. In fact, he gave you and I authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And he said, and nothing shall the enemies hurt you. Right. Amen. And the devil go to screaming and spewing poison out of his mouth and we go, ah! My dear friends, you, do, you, do you understand? Do you see where we are? Don't do that. Stand your ground. Do not. Say do not. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness. Don't dread it. I have given you a power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. That's what God is saying to you. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying... All around you, yeah. Yeah. down around you, what, what is it going to happen? These evils, what? Will not touch you. Do you believe that? Yes, do, do you see what we're talking about? Yes, Which 
is bigger in your eyes. God's word or the devil's poison? Now you, tell, you, have to, you have to answer that for yourself. I, I can't, you have to answer that. God said, he said, these evils will not touch you. They will not touch you. They will not touch you. Now, you, you, know, you know what's so wonderful about that? You don't have to try to make that work. Amen. The only thing you have to do is read that and make a decision whether or not you're going to believe it or not. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all you have to do is to make a decision whether or not you're going to believe what God says. You believe it and then go on establishing a lifestyle like you believe it. See what I mean? That's the way, that's the way, that's the way it works. You, you, you have to do that. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Mm -hmm. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, yeah. no evil will conquer you. You see that? No evil will conquer you. No evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. I like that. I like, even where you live is pure and confident, pure and perfect. Even where you live is pure. Even where you live is pure. God says no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels. Is God pulling my leg? Is he just joshing me? You know better than that. God don't josh. For he will order his angels. To protect you wherever you go. I like that. Everywhere I go, I'm protected. Everywhere I go, every everywhere I go, I am protected. I choose to believe that. Because now I, my focus is not on my, protecting me, but my focus is on the kingdom of God. Don't you see how this is? Don't you see how the devil can use these things to mess us up? Because if he can get my attention on me, then I lose sight on what I'm called to do. And he shut my calling down. It's a trick. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Glory to God. Are you ready to get back to basics? Are you ready to get excited about the word of God? Are you ready to just turn away from passivity and get over there in the arena of faith and let's get this job done? God is, he is looking for somebody. God is looking for those that are willing to put their life on the line and serve him. And let's get this gospel out. Are you ready to do that? Amen. Then bless God, let's do it. Father, we thank you today. We honor you for your grace. Thank you for the calling that you've placed on our lives. Father, we hear your voice. We hear your word, Lord Jesus. We are ready to turn from our passivity and turn to the word of God. And do the first work that you've given unto us so that your will be done in the earth. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts.